Welcome to this EDB Space Program report on events occurring in the latter half of 1968. For the most part, this report will cover the arrival of five Venus probes, but first we begin with a geostationary satellite launch. This is the Gaia-1 satellite on the Rama rocket from Schustrut Industries, and it is meant to provide continuing communication support for future missions. This launcher makes use of cheap variants of the Viking engines from the early Ariane rockets. And here we see the first stage complete and separate. And the second vacuum stage, now ignited. This is the first launch of a Rama rocket and has just barely enough energy to get this satellite into orbit. Unfortunately, it turned out that the trajectory was not quite correct and so you see here as it completes its burn the apoapsis is going quite high and the periapsis not quite in orbit yet and so the launch script had to use the Rutherford vacuum engine that you see there to complete the burn to orbit leading to a very high apoapsis not ideal but since this is going to geostationary orbit anyway it was not not a problem Incidentally, you'll note that we're making a wider range of engines available to our contractors so long as they meet the general capabilities that were available during this time to engines such as the Soviet engines that are available during this era and so forth. So that is why you will see the Rutherford vacuum engine and the Viking engine as well. And so after completing geosynchronous transfer burn, the satellite continued out to 36,000 kilometers and began to complete its orbit, but it couldn't do it in one step because, of course, it had that lopsided orbit due to the error in the launch program, given that this is the first time that this rocket was being used. So it had to make uh, multiple adjustments to get into the desired orbit. Thankfully, it did have the fuel to do so. And so that's the end of the Rutherford vacuum stage. The satellite then had to wait in orbit in order to get into the correct orbit. You'll see the periapsis is negative there. It did make a minor adjustment to ensure that the periapsis was well outside the atmosphere, as you, as you can see. It passed around 153 kilometers and then ignited the next stage, which was meant to circularize. The Rutherford vacuum stage was just meant to send it out on geostationary transfer, but was used. Uh, on a reignition in order to uh, help out with the correction that was necessary. Having done this job, the circularization stage uh, made sure that it went into a lower orbit and so would not interfere with other geostationary satellites as we see there. The inclination here not quite zero degrees, not quite equatorial but close enough. And so final corrections for the Gaia-1 satellite and the mission was successful. That was the only launch for this period. The EDB was otherwise focused on its Venus missions arriving to fulfill the Venus flyby contract. The first probe to arrive in Venus SOI was the Emerald probe from SWB Aerospace and therefore it technically got the contract fulfilled for us. Uh, of course the contract required to fly by a certain distance away from Venus so it hasn't done it yet at this point in the video. It is maneuvering to make sure its periapsis is close enough and it does do initial science high over Venus. Each of the probes has some unique instruments so each one did get some Venus science for the EDB. It's safe to say however that the Emerald did rack up quite a lot of data points and certainly the telemetry analysis and some of the basic instruments that all the probes carried uh, were handled here. Though some of them are biome dependent depending on the surface biome and so those could be repeated. And here we see it making orbit around Venus of course not required by the contract and uh, not required by the EDB when it set out to have contractors build probes but ultimately four of our probes are capable of making orbit around Venus with only one not able to do so. The Emerald probe did have a Communitron 16 and will therefore be able to provide some additional communication support for other probes that have Communitron 16s. It was left in a high orbit as you see there and we turn to the next craft entering Venus SOI. That was the Shearstrut Industries Shrek 2, which was launched by the TELUS rocket from Satellites R Us. The Shrek 2 using an S5.98 engine, 
perhaps a little advanced for this era, but theoretically possible for for manufacturers to make. It's the engine used in the Briz upper stages on the Proton rocket. Here we have some RCS adjustments, bringing the periapsis to a positive periapsis. This is certainly not meant to crash into Venus at this point. It will, however, get fairly close, and perhaps it would be possible to pass the probe into the atmosphere of Venus if communications could be sorted out. We have ignition of the S5.98 engine, and the Shrek 2 begins to make orbit around Venus. It also does have the Commutron 16s. Its only scientific instrument is a goo container. The S5.98 stage completes its work with the probe successfully in orbit, and now the probe has some extra delta V to maneuver, perhaps getting that periapsis into the atmosphere for some additional research. This mission is Proby McProbe Phase by physics students from Better Than Planes Incorporated, and it has the orbital telescope, magnetometer, and various other instruments that provide additional science. And it too makes orbit with an Asterisk 2 engine. Now the Mars flyby missions were launched before these missions, but will be arriving in the next reporting period. The Mars flyby missions were of course similar to these missions, as some exactly the same as these, because we wanted backups for all the Mars missions, and those backups got launched to Venus. After this sequence of missions though, because the demands of contracts will be much greater, possibly there won't be quite so many probes being launched to fulfill a particular contract as we had here. The next mission to enter Venus SOI was the Andromeda probe from Cool Industries Rockets. This was the only one that would be purely flyby and not make orbit around the planet. While much science had already been done by the other probes, it still had something to contribute by way of a gravity scan high over Venus's midlands and other biome-dependent ones as it got closer to Venus. As you can see, it's still a fairly high flyby. Last but not least among our five Venus missions was the Pearl 1 from Tangra Aerospace. Here it is making orbit around Venus. And so it became our fourth Venus orbiter. The EDB is cluttering up Venus space quite rapidly, though we trust that there will be plenty of room for more probes. And here now we turn back to the Shrek 2 probe, which separated off from its transfer and orbital insertion stage in order to dip its periapsis into the atmosphere of Venus. Unfortunately, it lost communication when entering the atmosphere of Venus and so did not transfer any new data. With that, thank you for watching this report on the activities of the EDB space program and we hope you enjoyed this video.